Hey guys, this is Fiend Friends 91. I'm bringing you my finally the season f two episode five review. Now, this episode started out, and everybody just wanted to see the beginning because no one was sure how it was going to go down based on how episode four ended. Now, before we actually start with the whole, or I actually start with the whole review things, I want to show you guys something that one thing doesn't really make sense about this beginning. That guy shot at point blank range in, well not point blank, but almost point blank range into a crowd of people and didn't kill any of them? I mean, come on, that's what the major fear was, that certain people were going to die from that shot. I mean, that's like, uh, how, that is either the worst shot in the world or that guy just, anyway, telltale, that's kind of lazy writing. I'm not saying that, once again, that the writers are lazy, but that's kind of just like, let's end it with a really big, good cliffhanger and then and start it with everybody alive somehow. Sure, Mike's hit. Uh, Mike, really. Only Mike was hit, it seems, by at least that first shot. I'm not sure when he was hit, but I'm just saying only Mike, really, because Luke didn't get hit till later. But there was also another thing that didn't make sense and was, once again, kind of lazy writing. I'm not sure if it was lazy, or maybe lazy animation. I don't know what it was. But, or at least miscommunication. At the beginning, the big guy, or at the episode four, end of episode four, the big guy came from the forest and he had the AK-47. But at the beginning of episode five, the big guy had the shotgun and was came from the street. And the little guy, or the skinnier guy, had the AK-47 in the forest. That, that really didn't make sense. I mean, how could they miss that? They like switched where they were before 18 episodes. What, did the animators come up to do the work today and go, oh, where did I have this guy again? Oh, anyway, I'll just put him in the forest. Anyway, all right, let's move on. I do like the whole campfire scene, but it's it, you could you could kind of tell that it was going to end badly because it always happens like this. It happens good, bad, like something. And when something's really this good, and even Kenny is like agreeing with most of the people here. Not not literally agreeing, but like he's there, he's supportive. Like they're they're all at the campfire. They're all having a merry good time. People are laughing. People are happy. So you you know that you're about to come up on some bad times right now it's, it's just it's just known and then you get to the ice and it was like oh come on ice i mean i knew that once you just step on the ice you know something bad's happening and you knew that like you, there was nothing good that was going to come out of just stepping on this ice i mean it was it was it was too obvious but one thing about this whole episode in general it was actually better, in my opinion, in terms of length and maybe even content than episode five of season one. Not that it ended better, but it was actually, I'll get to the endings later, but it was actually in terms of just, it seemed like to give me more, that's all. Because episode five, let's face it, sure, if you had Ben, it gave you Ben's whole thing and had Kenny's de um, death, in quotation marks, but... It still didn't have much. Once you got to the hotel, you basically got to talk to the guy, and then you save Clementine. Lee, di Lee dies once again in quotation marks. But anyway, like, like I was trying to say, it, it's just in content. What was in this episode was a lot more than I expected from a fifth episode because the fifth episode is just usually like this conclusion, uh, based on season one, of course. So you got to give Telltale that. But I, I still, like I said, the problems was still with the whole um, inconsistency from the end episode four to episode five. Yeah, that's still a problem. But but um, still, with the whole ice thing, it's weird how they can run on it. Anybody ever else cast that? Like, they're not slipping on this ice. Eduardo, I mean, not Eduardo. I don't know why I wanted to call him that. Arvo runs even though he's got that thing in his leg, basically, or on his leg. And he runs and then Clementine kind of runs too. And it's like, this is ice. Have you guys ever been on ice? Truth be told, I haven't been on ice too much. I've only been on ice like probably once actually, because I once again live in the Bahamas. Not like we get much ice here, not in lakes. But the ice is not the easiest thing to run on, so it was kind of unrealistic. And then with the whole Luke thing, like you could, t the Luke was like the most loved character. Let's just face it: if there is a most loved character other than Clementine, let's just get Clementine out of the equation. But if you, if there is a most loved character other than Clementine in the group, they're dead. Accept it. Learn to live with it. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it just happened last time. It happened 
I kind of like I kind of said this about Mark. He was a cool guy from the beginning. Like most people liked him basically. And then what? Dead. It just happens. It's going to happen to like every immediately or really easy to like character in this game. <laughs> And when with the whole Clementine helping Luke thing, the, the thing I didn't like about it, I'm not going to exactly go in detail about Luke's death. But what I didn't like was Luke, when they go under, Clementine gets grabbed by a walker, right? And Clementine can get away from the walker. Luke gets grabbed by a walker. He somehow is pulled to the bottom. But with Clementine, it's still 11 year old girl. I don't care if Luke was shot. He should have been able to get away from that walker and the walker should not be able to pull him. Do you see how fast that walker pulled him down to the bottom of the lake i mean really that must have been a walker who worked out like crap to carry luke down there i'm just saying because this uh this scene well anyway, i'm not gonna deal too far into this scene i know that telltale just wanted luke to die and it didn't make sense you know if luke because luke look, look how luke is holding that walker there's no way he shouldn't be able to just kick it i know the walker is grabbing even his bad leg but still uh anyway let's move on also, this whole Chuck thing, now, I'm going to probably mention this more in a later video, but it's really a lot like Kenny's boat. He, the whole thing about him fixing it up, and like the whole, I decide where we go, it was like, it really sounded like the boat again. It's like, no, it's like, no, no, we have to go where I want to go, we're going on this truck, we're going to Wellington, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, to me, it was just a little bit too copycat. Once again, falls under kind of... You know, not uh, too creative writing. I'm gonna go with that this time because I've been saying the other stuff about writing a little bit too much. Anyway, but it really could tell that this truck was gonna become, not the truck itself, but like where they were going. Once they started talking, you could tell everybody like, most, like everybody wanted to go back to house. Even if you agree like, let's go back to house, everybody agrees except for Kenny. Kenny pulls the whole, I'm right, you guys are wrong. I don't care about what anybody else does thing. And we're back to the boat on Crawford. But the whole trying to take the truck thing, it still was a little bit reach. I know that Mike, the only thing that didn't kind of make sense about this was that I know that they would have wanted to left Kenny, right? But leave with all the stuff. I could get if they just, if they left Clem, because it doesn't make sense that they would leave, take Jane because Jane is so close to Clementine and Clementine is so close to Kenny. But it makes sense. Bonnie even kind of hinted at it when she was saying the whole, men promised her things and not one of them came true and she thinks there might be another way and this is kind of her out of the way so but with mike it just it didn't make sense that he the type of guy he is to take all their food or even bonnie to take all their food Ugh. i don't know it just didn't make sense I, 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 they and they could have easily made this um scene pretty uh good without them taking the food if, if they just took even one of the bags, like Jane said there were two bags. That would have been so perfect. It's like, we take one, we leave one for you guys. I mean, leaving them to f um, defenseless and, oh, well, not defenseless, but leaving them with um, no food, that's just not something that I think Mike, based on his personality, would have done. But anyway, let's just, uh, I guess they just wanted to add more tension. I mean, it, would, it did add a little bit more tension. They're taking all the food. Because if they weren't taking all the food, I could see Clementine in some games being like, okay, you guys go. I'll let you go. Because they're just taking the truck. I could see that maybe happening. But but with the whole of the food? No. Except no, with no way Clementine could let them go with that. Anyway, the whole shot was unexpected, even though it was Arvo who was holding the gun. But still, it was it was a little bit over dramatic, but I did like how it brought us to the cutscene or flashback, if you will. And I loved the flashback. It was great. We needed to see Lee again. We needed to have this whole thing. It was a good choice. It was a very good scene to pick. But the only thing I didn't make sense to me about the scene was that the scene is called, the, I mean, the episode is called No Going Back. Why would Clementine want to go back to the worst day, what she described as the crappiest day? I mean, why would she want for that to happen? So to me, it didn't make sense to me that she would want to go back to this particular scene. But... At, unless it was the whole my worst day with the old group was my was better than like any day with the new group that could have been it like it could have been like a little metaphorical thing there or whatever you call it like could have been like this even though this day was so bad i'd rather go back to this day than stay where i am right now and that is cool 
And also, you know, Lee, of course, got to give us some foreshadowing advice. Like, it's not always that simple. Sometimes you got to hurt people. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, the whole foreshadowing with whole Kenny and thing. Uh, I didn't see the ending that was coming. I didn't see that until I didn't think that was going to happen. But they really did do that whole ending pretty well. This this whole truck scene starts off pretty actually calm, which is strange for Denny and Kane. I mean, Jane and Kenny. Well, I said Jenny and Kane. <laughs> anyway, for Jane and Kenny, this whole scene, once again, it didn't make much sense that they just, what? Oh, the bullet wound's fine. Don't worry about it. Walk it off. I mean, I know Jane said that it went right through, but I'm serious. I mean, did they not tie it up? I mean, they may have. You didn't see it, maybe, but it didn't look like they did. It's just like, what? Do you want to just let the blood seep out of the girl's body? Anyway, but it did make sense that, like, this whole scene started off really calm. But then, of course, Jane and Kenny escalated it. And it had to. I mean, if they ended it like this, it would not be an ending at all. I mean, just them just driving off and maybe get finding Wellington together. And then what? Like, when they get to Wellington, Kenny and Jane end up to... <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't say that without laughing. I, I, I just imagined Kenny and Jane walking off from Wellington by themselves, leaving Clementine and AJ... <laughs> Wow, that would have been uh, that would have been a good DLC. Ke just call it the Kenny and Jane DLC. See who kills each other first. <laughs> that would be oh, that would have been great. Anyway, like I said, the ending quickly escalates from this whole car scene. But this whole fight scene was kind of, I mean, I get what they're trying to say. The whole Jane is trying to get Clementine to see how Kenny really is. But there were certain aspects of the fight scene that didn't make too much sense. Why did Jane constantly fight Kenny? I mean, Jane tries to kill Kenny. Jane really, I mean, she, I mean, she actually made the first blow with the knife, not not the first literal blow, but the first like thing that cut deep, because she actually cut Kenny like at his stomach section with the knife. So to me, it was like, why would Jane do this? So because it just, to me, it went farther than like Jane even says later she didn't expect it to go this far. But I'm like, when it did go that far, why didn't she just say, oh, AJ is alive. Why did she not just say that? That just, and even, I'll probably mention this later in like a, maybe Kenny video, Kenny bio or Jane bio if I do that. But it just, to me, doesn't make sense that Jane wouldn't have just screamed AJ's alive during the fight. It just, I don't know whether, I know the writers wanted to make us, you know, if, um, you know, have Kenny kill Jane, but still, imagine you are Jane you are about to die you see this guy about to stick a knife you know how to, how you can stop this from happening and you don't do it it just doesn't make sense at that moment you're trying at, at the moment right before you die you're trying to think everything that would save your life or everything that would keep you alive and she didn't think of that but anyway like i said also another thing that didn't make sense they're driving for hours and jane does not um say anything until clementine wakes up i know the whole point is that you're the player but seriously, Jane, you're driving for hours in the other direction, and you didn't mention, let's go back to Howe's, until Clementine woke up? I mean, you just drove hours in the wrong way. It just doesn't make sense. Even Clem could have even, Jane could have even used the whole Clem's injured, we have to go back for house for medical care, or medical supplies. That would have made sense. But anyway, they kind of didn't go with that. But like I said, the episode five was still really good because they made the whole endings were really great. Though, once again, I like Kenny's ending kind of more than I like Jane's because Kenny actually understands that he is more of a, he is dangerous. Jane doesn't seem to understand that because I, I honestly, when I was, when, when I was um, with playing with Clementine and, and Jane and Kenny were arguing in the truck, I was like, okay, why do we have two Kennys? That's what I basically thought. The way they argue is like Jane is really not, a, I wouldn't call her a female version of Kenny, but she's, she really has a lot of Kenny's same, Kenny same tri tri traits. With, especially with arguing but anyway like uh, let me just finish this up episode five really good um the flashback good too but i'm just weirded that they picked that scene the whole fight with jane and kenny kind of a little overdoing it and kind of didn't make sense that, that Ch jane did not say what she knew before kenny killed her but other than that this was a pretty good episode it was a pretty solid way to end this whole game the endings were great. They, the multiple endings, I mean, the fact that they are so different really made it really stick out, and it was really great. But uh, any, other than that, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'm done with these reviews for now. <laughs>
God bless you all.